back to another episode of Basic Helper Duties. In today's episode, we're going to talk about prepping the pipe ends. Uh, preparation is everything. It all starts from the prep. It's just like foundation of a house. You gotta have a good solid, solid foundation to have a good solid structure. It's the same thing with pipe work. As long as you got a good accurate landing and the, the cut is square and everything, they, the space in the perfect world is, is going to be just as accurate as can be. So prep is everything. Very, very important. I would consider this the most important step of the weld because it means absolutely everything. So it's your job as a helper to make sure that landing and the prepping of the pipe, the bevels are as clean and as square as possible. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that and little tips and tricks I know to help you guys put a landing on and prep the ends of the pipe the best that you can. So let's jump right into it. Basic things you need to prep a weld are your grinder, grinding disc, wire wheel, and a uh, sand pad, and five. So the first thing you want to do to a bevel after it has been cut is put a landing on it. Either brush it or put a landing on it. I like to put a, a landing on it just because you're going to have to brush it. Once you put this landing on, there's going to be a little lip on the inside. So if, if you can help it, try to just change this wheel out once. It's not always gonna happen that way. You're, you might have to change it back and forth a couple times depending on the weld and uh, what all you gotta fix and everything. So, but what I like to do is put a landing on. A landing for downhill welding, you usually want anywhere between a, like a penny and a nickel thickness. What the landing does, it just gives you something to weld to. Whenever you, like this right here, it's to a point. You've got a space and you've got two sharp points. So if you don't have no landing, you're pretty much, pretty much welding on paper. That's what a landing's for, is just give, give you something to weld to. So all I did there was just put a flat spot on the pipe and now you have, that's about a, like a penny, maybe a nickel, but you want it to be as even as possible all the way around. So to help you do that, long strokes, if you notice I was trying to keep it, this guard does not help. Uh, a lot of helpers don't like using this guard because it does get in the way, but nowadays, half the time anymore, anywhere you go, you gotta have a guard. So that's why I wanted to show it with a guard. But, so keeping the grinder is Grinding wheel as flat as possible, like not like this or like this, but as flat as possible. Start at the top and one motion all the way to the bottom. Start at the top again and one motion all the way to the bottom. Those long strokes and even amount of pressure is just gonna help you keep a consistent thickness. You don't wanna you don't wanna do this number or do this because you could you could put waves in it, you know, this grinding disc is might cut into it so Ideally, you just want to keep it flat and one long motion. That's how you put a landing on. Now, now you see these, there's the tack bent up here, so you want to, you want to work on, practice on grinding those down. You can either use a grinding disc or a sanding pad. Sometimes a sanding pad takes it down easier or whatever, but whatever you do, try not to affect the very tip of your, of your pipe. You're trying to keep this whole thing square as possible. So just keep that in mind. And this just takes practice and getting familiar with the grinder. Whenever you make a cut, you got this, I call it mill skill. It's just like flakes of like metal on here. And you wanna, it doesn't hurt to just go ahead and grind that off. Now, if your cut's perfect, you may not need to do this but it's good to practice this just to get used to running a grinder and keeping it at the same angle all the way around. OK, 
you noticed I was using this part of my grinder, the grinding disc. That to me keeps it more even and easier to control. You just always wanna be paying attention by looking, I go over it, bring it back, and look at what you just done. That way you're not getting into your landing. You know, a lot of this running a grinder is just, it's just practice handling this grinder. That's where welding on structural stuff helps, you know, cause you can run a grinder on, on structural stuff and just get the feel of a grinder, get used to running a grinder. If you don't, if you just jump right into being a helper, it's good practice. Just take your time and don't hurt yourself and be as accurate as you can. Even though <clears throat> you might be slower than like a helper that you're working with or whatever, you might be slower at first. Don't worry about your speed. That speed will come with time. Just work on, work on good, accurate preparation. That's what's gonna make a welder and a weld welder's job a lot easier and make a weld go a lot easier. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, put my wire wheel on and I'm gonna wire wheel this inside real good. And I might even take this wire wheel around the outside. Start at the bottom, go this way, and this way. Or you can go all the way around as long as you got good control of it. But you notice I'm keeping this part of the, the disc on the pipe at all times. I'm not going, I'm not going from here to here because that's going to cause it to jump. You want to keep, you want to keep your grinder sticking out this way. You want to keep this part of your grinder. Start at the bottom. If your wire wheel does not get that lip on the inside to come out, here's where you can use the file. You will still want to use the brush to clean the inside of the pipe to get it real clean. But if that lip is still there, you can use your file to knock that lip out from the inside. And remember, the teeth of the file run one direction. You do the same thing on the outside. Keep the same part of the wire wheel on the pipe at all times. So you can see now we got a, instead of being sharp out here, it's it's got a flat spot. That's what a landing is. I'm gonna good even landing all the way around. And then ideally, in the perfect world, you should be able to look. You can tell there's some dips in it, you know, so this is not is not uh, the best job in the world. The cut was probably wavy, and uh, I know Austin's not the best helper in the world. But ideally, this would be all one plane. That's what you wanna try to avoid. This is a little wavy. This is what you do not want. The, a lot of that is just because the cut was messed up. I, I've made a lot of cuts on here, and I didn't have, maybe you set a beveling machine on here to make a cut, you're not gonna get, because all these aren't square with each other. Anyway, so this cut is not square, so it doesn't help with that, but you want this to stay all one plane. That's how you're gonna get the most even gap. Because if you make this all square and your next piece that you're fitting up to it all square, you're gonna have the, the best gap even all the way around. So that's the goal is to have it even all the way around. I hope I was able to explain that to you guys good enough about that grinder. The, the main idea is you don't want this to jump. And like I said, if it ever happens, it probably will if you guys haven't ran a grinder very much. It's happened to me and I, I've ran a grinder a lot uh, over the years and it still happens. But I just wanna give you guys that real helpful tip because that's gonna, it's gonna save you from getting this thing wrapped up in your shirt or whatever. Just just make sure you have the right part of the grinding wheel on the, on the pipe at all times and that's that's gonna uh, decline the amount of times it's gonna jump on you, you know? So it can be very dangerous, but it can also be very, very fast and efficient if you run this grinder the proper way and uh, things like that. So anyway, and remember, like I've said in the past couple of episodes that I've done, every welder is different. Some welders are gonna like a thin landing, like a dime landing. Some welders are gonna like a nickel. Uh, it, just, it just depends on the welder. So ask your welder what kind of landing he likes. Every welder's different. Adapt to your welder. 
And another helpful tip, if you are brother-in-lawing with, you know, if you're on Big Pipe where you got a brother-in-law and you got, so therefore you got another helper there, if you're, if you're going to make a weld, usually it's ideal for one helper to clean up one side and one helper to clean up the other. But communicate with each other, see how each other's welder likes their landings. That way it's this pipe matches this other pipe that you're welding to. That is going to be it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it was helpful. I hope I was able to explain uh, what a landing is and what it does and how to go about getting an even one on here uh, good enough. I hope I was able to explain all that good enough. Uh, if not, ask me questions in the comments. I'll, uh, I'll answer, them for, answer them for you guys. This is the third episode in the Basic Helper Duties series. Next week, I'm going to do how to grind a bead once the tacks are in, how to hit the tacks, soften tight spots, and uh, things like that, and then also how to grind the beat, just helpful tips on that, and then uh, transition video, and then how to use a bevel machine, tips and tricks on how to, how to cut pipe, and anyway, thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next Friday, five o'clock central time. Subscribe to this channel if you have not already. Whenever you hit the subscribe button, there will be a bell that pops up. If you hit that bell, it will notify you whenever I post a new video. But I post every Friday at 5 o'clock Central Time. So come back and see me next week. And uh, go check out arosswelding.com if you have not already. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, learn something every day.